And for more on this topic, uh, our guest is Mary Harrod, Associate Professor in French and Screen Studies at the University of Warwick. Thank you so much uh, for agreeing to answer our questions today on France 24. Uh, professor, uh, what does this say about uh, France's uh, uh, cinema industry? Is this something uh, that is particularly prevalent in France compared to in other countries? In the French cinema industry, I should say. We'll start with that. Okay. Um, it's not alone. And of course, we saw, for instance, uh, the reaction from Italy when Asia Argento spoke out against Weinstein and was kind of hounded out of her home nation. Um, but France, you know, does have particular problems, I would say. Um, the French industry has a particular culture of, of power imbalances. We have the, in the new wave in the, the 60s. Uh, many actors who were in relationships with the actresses on screen sorry, directors in relationships with actresses uh, who are much younger and obviously in a position of sort of subordinate power. Um, but I think it, it really, you know, is symptomatic of a wider culture, which has many, many complex factors uh, uh, to do with, you know, professional norms and indeed cultural norms about uh, coupling behavior and what's actually desirable in terms of courting and interpersonal dynamics between the genders. Yeah, I, I, the, 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 what you're talking about, what is seen as desirable, I mean, clearly there is a fixation on, on youth, right? We're seeing a lot of these people that are, um, that are underage or that were underage, um, this idea that, you know, the younger you are, the more maybe innocent you are. I mean, what can you help us unpack uh, this idea of, of, of youth and of the desirability of it? Uh, well, I think in a way, youth is one uh, example of somebody uh, in a position uh, of, you know, of, of lack of uh, power, essentially. And I think it's more that this um, this imbalanced relationship. I mean, it goes right back to the 18th century when uh, the novel Les Liaisons Dangereuses was written. And, you know, that's been made into many film adaptations and uh, and, and other types of adaptation. So it's quite familiar to people, but it really did reflect a true situation in 18th century France, where in fact manuals were circulated uh, detailing how you could engage in pursuit and how to seduce people. So it was a real cultural practice. And this was at a time when in Anglophone nations, we were having the beginnings of what we might think of as a modern type of marriage based on companionship, some elements of romance, but a sort of special understanding with one person. So a more, more of an egalitarian relationship. Whereas in France, the idea of the chase clearly speaks to um, unequal status. And you really saw with the first reaction to Me Too, well, one of the more famous reactions of the letter in Le Monde by, um, well, it was it, poor Catherine Deneuve became the sort of figurehead of it, although it wasn't only her, but this letter where they were defending la liberté d'importuner, the freedom to pester. You know, it was a, it's a kind of sacred cow. The, the, the being chased is even seen as desirable by particularly kind of older generations of women as well. Yeah, the the desire to be or the 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 freedom to be, uh, as you said, pestered. Um, but it also talks about, I, I mean, from my perspective, at least, that the fact that you know it's okay to be pestered as long as the person who's pestering understands that no mean no means no. And I think that also talks about talks to mm. consent and and things about uh, power. Once again, would you say that these revelations concerning the film industry um, can be applied to the general population? I mean, obviously, this is a very kind of a tricky question because it's hard to kind of, you know, paint a whole country or a whole culture uh, with one with one brush. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we have seen examples from other sectors, of course. I mean, one of the more famous ones recently being Vanessa Springora's well-known book, um, Consent, in which she accuses the fetid writer Gabriel Matzneff of, um, uh, you know, taking advantage of her. So much like what's happened with Judith Godrej, she was um, underage and in a, a relationship with a much older authority figure. And what's kind of striking is that it was socially sanctioned, entirely endorsed by parents. She was taken to a doctor to see, you know, that it was sort of like she could be physically ready. Um, so the establishment was really behind this. And I think that does actually go back to your point about innocence quite interestingly. Um, I mean, at that time in the 70s, when, when she would have been growing up, the legacy of psychoanalysis was very, very prevalent in France and particularly in the left sort of liberal classes. And that really put um, desire and sexuality on a pedestal, uh, you know, against kind of social uh, constrictions as it would be seen. And, and I think this idea of kind of innocence and vitality is all part of that discourse. 
but it's very problematic because uh, you know freedom is often at the cost of, of somebody else. Um, so, yeah, liberté, égalité, fraternité. Well, where's the sororité? Egalité. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. Mary Herod there. Uh, we're joining us from the University of Warwick. Thank you for answering Thank you. our questions.